right, welcome everyone. This is our 15.4 video. That is double integrals with polar coordinates. Uh, and I have an example here from spring 2016, kind of a big example here. It says, use integration and polar coordinates to compute the area of the region in the first quadrant inside of the circle and below the line y equals x. Recall that we have two cosines squared of theta is equal to one plus cosine of two theta. That sounds ominous, right? How will we use that? Well, let's see. So again, we want to figure out an area of a region. So maybe my first step here, and I'm gonna save a little bit of room because I do have uh, some work to do here, but I need to remember computing the area of a region, this is a problem that's solved with double integrals. So remember that the area of a region is gonna be equal to the double integral of one dA right, over our region, maybe R or something like this. If I go ahead and decide, I'm gonna compute this using polar coordinates, right, I'm gonna use maybe double integral of R, and I'm gonna use R dr d theta. So this is the thing that, this is my function that I'm gonna be integrating, and kind of uh, a lot of the work is gonna come down to figuring out what are these good bounds, right? What are the bounds of this double integral here? What are the R values, what are the theta values, right, for this kind of complicated region it's describing up here? All right, so that's what I'm gonna evaluate. Again, I need to figure out now the bounds. So, okay, let's go ahead and start sketching a little bit. Well, we're in the first quadrant, so maybe uh, make the first quadrant relatively large, something like this. Inside of the circle, uh, x minus 1 quantity squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So that's a circle. Its center is 1, 0. So maybe let's put a little dot here. 1, 0, that's the center. Again, this has been shifted to the right by 1, and it hasn't been shifted up and down at all. And it has a radius of 1. So radius of one, so maybe we're gonna go out to two, down to zero here. This is gonna look something like this maybe. And of course the, the circle continues, right? But again, it's specified in the first quadrant. So it would continue down below here, but again, because it says first quadrant, uh, we really only care about the top half of the circle. All right, so this is the first bit, and it says, and below the line y equals x. So if I was to, Maybe I'll underline here, so this is the stuff I did maybe in black. Uh, let's use green here, so y equals x. So y equals x, that's gonna be a nice straight line here. Maybe something like this. And okay, so it looks like, again, I'm trying to figure out the area of this region here. Let me go ahead and maybe shade it below this line in the first quadrant and inside of the circle, right? So that's kind of all the information that I've been given. Again, first quadrant, inside circle, below line. So that's the region right there. Okay, so let's first think about our R limits of integration, right? So our R limits of integration, kind of imagine that we're starting at the origin and we're growing our radius, right? We're getting bigger and bigger radiuses, so it's looking something like this. And so the first question is, how do we enter in to this region that we're integrating over. And it seems like as soon as we take the tiniest step, you know, away from the origin, we are already inside of our region. So therefore, we seem to enter in through r equals zero is how we enter. So in fact, maybe let me go ahead and erase down here and I'm just gonna put r equals zero right there. We seem to exit through this circle. Right? It always seems to be exiting through this circle. Well, for the circle, all we have is this equation right here, but I need r equals, right? This needs to be an r value. So I need to spend some time, right, converting this into polar coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that here. So let's see, x is going to be r cosine theta minus 1, quantity squared, plus y squared. So y is r sine theta all being squared is equal to one. And remember, I need an R value, I need R equals. So let's maybe go ahead and expand this out and try to solve R equals. So if I expand this out, remember this first one's a binomial, we have to foil, first inners, outers, lasts. So let's see, first would be R squared cosine squared theta. Inners and outers would together make negative two R cosine theta. And then lasts would make plus one, right? Negative one times negative one would be plus one. And now here, let's go ahead and rewrite this as r squared sine squared theta. Ooh, and this is actually pretty nice here. We can see now 
that we have a cosine squared and a sine squared, right? And both of those are next to an r squared. So we can go ahead and factor out maybe an r squared from both of these things. And then cosine squared plus sine squared is going to equal 1. So, okay, let's go ahead and rewrite this as r squared times 1, or just r squared if you'd like. We can go ahead and subtract away our 2r cosine of theta. And then finally, we see we have a 1 on the left-hand side. We have a 1 on the right-hand side. So we can subtract 1 from both sides, and that'll give us a 0 on the other side. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 0. All right, we can now see that both of these terms here, uh, let's see, have an r. So I can go ahead and factor out an r, and then I'm going to have an r minus 2 cosine of theta. And this needs to equal 0. So there are two solutions when this is equal to 0. Either r itself is equal to 0, or r should be equal to 2 cosine theta. So again, r is equal to 0, or r is equal to 2 cosine theta. So again, remember, we're trying to find an equation for the circle here. r equals 0 is just a point. right? So this is not going to be the equation for the circle. Let's go ahead. This is going to be an extraneous solution here. Uh, so the equation for the circle is going to be r equals 2 cosine theta. And you can, of course, verify that by plotting some points. So, okay, again, the circle right here is given by r equals 2 cosine theta. So there is the equation for this circle in polar coordinates. So, again, this is the way that we're leaving. So this is going to be 2 cosine theta as our upper limit of integration. All right, now I need to think about what should my theta values be, right? What is the smallest theta value for which I'm in my uh, region of integration or that I'm integrating over? And what is the largest theta value? So it seems like my smallest theta value is actually immediately, you know, right at theta equals zero, I seem to start to enter into my region of integration. And as I continue upwards, right, if I travel in this positive theta direction, as soon as I hit this line right here, right, that's when I leave. So that line right there, let's go ahead and do a little bit of uh, algebra here to figure out what polar equation uh, is given by this line y equals x. So y equals x. And, and maybe you've done this problem or, or, or problems like this enough that you already know this answer. But let's pretend that we don't. Right? So y equals x. y is r sine theta. x is r cosine theta. And let's see, there's an r on both sides. Assuming that r is not 0, we can go ahead and cancel these. And then we could go ahead and divide through by cosine, maybe. So we would get sine divided by cosine. That's going to be the same thing as tangent. So tangent of theta is equal to 1. So you could say, when does tangent of theta equal 1? Well, that's exactly when theta is equal to pi over 4. Right? So again, maybe you've done this enough. And maybe you have even can guess by looking at this, OK, this seems halfway in between you know, 90 degrees. Right Here would be a full 90 degrees. This seems about halfway in between. So that's going to be 45 degrees, AKA pi over 4. So there we go. That is our setup, and that is, you know, the, the hardest bit here. But still, we haven't really used this hint, right? So this is extra hint here. Uh, so let's see how we're going to use that. That's probably going to be in the evaluation. So, okay, let's go ahead and start evaluating here. So working my way inside out. So when I integrate r, I'm going to have r squared over 2. I need to evaluate that from 0 to 2 cosine theta. So let's see, when I go ahead and plug in those values, let me write this down right quick. So let's see, plug in 2 cosine theta everywhere I see an r. So that's going to give me maybe 4 cosine squared theta over 2. So you see a little bit of cancellation. And then I would subtract away technically 0 over 2. So that's just subtracting away 0. So we can see that there's a little bit of cancellation here. Uh, let's see, the 2 and the 4 make 2 on top. All right, and now I have to integrate cosine squared. And remember, this was actually something that we learned about you know, in our Calc 2 days. There was kind of a power reduction rule on how to evaluate out cosine squared. Uh, but I think, hopefully, that's this. Yes, exactly. So 2 cosine squared theta, that's exactly what I have here, 2 cosine squared theta. Uh, I can trade that in for 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. So let's go ahead and use that. So let me go ahead and trade that in, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. And now this is much easier to integrate, right? This is our power reduction rule. We've reduced our power from a squared to a cosine to the first power, right? So this is going to be a lot easier to integrate. So when I integrate this, I'm going to have theta plus, I think it's going to be like a sine of 2 theta or something like this. 
Uh, let's double check. If I was to take the derivative of this, theta would go to 1. Sine would go to cosine. Oh, but there's this chain rule, right? I'd have to multiply by 2. That's the derivative of the inside. And so I need a 1 half here. So that way that 2 has something to cancel with, and I just am left with 1 cosine of 2 theta. All right? Okay. So now let's go ahead and plug in. We had 0 to pi over 4. So dealing with the theta stuff first, I would have pi over 4 minus 0, I suppose, plus a half. And now dealing with the sine stuff, I would have sine of 2 times pi over 4. So 2 times pi over 4 would be pi over 2. So sine of pi over 2, that would be 1. And then subtract away when I plug in 0. So sine of 2 zeros. So that's going to be sine of 0. Sine of 0 is just 0. So, okay, it looks like my final answer here is going to be pi over 4 plus 1 half. So that's how I would leave my final answer. And again, kind of if you don't get out a positive number, I would be really concerned, right? Because again, what are we computing? We're computing an area, right? So we're computing an area. And in fact, you can really even see the pieces here. You can, this is a nice problem because we can verify our work, right? Uh, it said we do have to use polar coordinates, but you can see that this is composed out of a nice triangle over here. Maybe I'll shade the triangle in green. And a quarter of a circle, which I'll shade in maybe purplish. Yeah, that orange is coming through pretty strong. So we can see there's a triangle and a quarter of a circle, right? A quarter of a circle of radius 1. Well, we see here in our final answer, we have the area of a quarter of a circle of radius 1, right, pi r squared, but only a quarter of it. And we have the area of the triangle, right, 1 half base times height. So that's 1 half. The base here is 1. The height is 1. So 1 half, 1 times 1, is 1 half. So this is an answer that we can actually calculate out geometrically, right, to verify our work. But again, it said use polar coordinates, right? We wanted to actually compute this using a double integral. Uh, and so if you didn't do that, I, I'm assuming you would receive very few points. Because again, uh, knowing the area formula for a triangle and a circle is not calculus 3, right? We're trying to test calculus 3 knowledge here. All right, so that is our final answer. Again, pi over 4 plus 1 half. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time.